everyone, of course. If the, if if it's not, they shouldn't say anything <laughs> or change their voice. Okay, Gwen. Well, I, <clears throat> I'm just curious if if uh, I'm not I'm not speaking so much from my experience, but I'm curious that fabulous presentation film uh, uh, the the uh, morning the funeral uh, on for Earth Day. How how on earth did 400 some people, I don't know how many reds there were, how did that happen? And, and, and knowing, I mean, that's just was such a phenomenal scene. And, and what advice do you have for, um, you know, what, from what you know about us and, and, well, we're, we're based in New England, that, that uh, you, you might offer as to how, how we might become even more effective than we are although i think we're we're doing pretty well but just yeah just... yeah i mean that was really interesting because numbers had sort of waned you know lots of different things have, have happened different characters or different ideas have come around and stuff and like you know it's always the same as things sort of get go on maybe like you know you lose momentum a little bit and the pandemic didn't help obviously but what we did there was to organize this um, and what was it was quite handy because Chris Packham is a bit of a kind of celebrity almost in England anyway, and he was going to come and speak in support of the nature thing. So we arranged this. Um, I think it's still on on the website, but I can send you guys the stuff. And it's kind of pitched like come and be a part of this theatrical, you know, um, experiment almost. So that we were looking to create this, you know, this mass piece of theatre. And we could, and we inducted, you know, we invited people to join. So there's, I can't remember, it's around 300 reds in the end. I think there's 120 people that had done it before and all the rest were new. But yeah, that's what kind of invigorated it. And we, that went out through the XR networks. Wow. Nationally, I think. So we sort of pitched out to other networks in the country, you know, and like in, in America, maybe you'd pitch to people in the East or whatever. So it went out through the XR networks that people could come and be a part of this thing. And then we did trainings and some costume making workshops and stuff and everyone kind of rallied around it. Um, so that was quite an interesting way of kind of pulling people back together for a, a, a bigger performance piece, you know, that's what kind of sold it, I guess, to people with a little addition of like, yeah, no, Chris Packham coming to speak and stuff like that. It was amazing. Uh, and at least one of our Reds vows, if it ever happens again, she's going to go. Some of the rest <laughs> of us haven't yet said that. Anybody else have a comment or a question like when that was a nice question? Raise your hand or unmute. And... Kathleen? I'm, I'd be interested in your talking briefly about your relationship with Extinction Rebellion. Uh, we we usually appear with them here and very often because they've invited us. Uh, I think it's been at the same time a productive relationship and sometimes a difficult one. Um, and I'm, I'm curious to, to know what, what that's like for you in the UK. Yeah, not dissimilar from what you described there, I guess. Like we, we didn't, we weren't... Um... We didn't really get in touch. Well, I don't know. It's like, who is Extinction Rebellion, isn't it? Is that thing of I am Spartacus, you know? Um, so I went up to where everyone was getting ready, the stages and everything that were going out in the first rebellion. There was a lot of people from the activist community that I knew there involved, but not. I didn't meet anyone like, you know, the people from Strad that kind of initiated the kind of the designs element of that or Roger, um, I forget his name, uh, and the wonderful, um, I can't remember the names now, <laughs> there's a, a fabulous doctor lady who was one of the original creators. I was in touch with her a little bit afterwards, but initially it was very freestyle and we we sort of tried to make contact. We, we messaged in a few times and never got a reply because it was just kind of 
it's all voluntary run so it's just like hectic so it seemed really together but no one ever responded um and then yeah obviously we just went and did our thing really and we weren't in any, we weren't sort of affiliated with extinction rebellion any more than anyone else who was there doing their thing you know um like I think there was other costume stuff happening. There was other there was musicians playing, but obviously they were all independent, as were we. But we just became the photo, you know, people, um, like the poster girls, if you like, uh, because the photograph was hitting the press all the time. So we became forever intrinsically kind of linked, really, with Extinction Rebellion. On the ground, we would we would be able to find out like there's usually someone there at each camp who could tell us what was going on and if it was good for us to go somewhere else. But we sort of stopped trying to coordinate with them because it was just too hectic. And the the main thing was that people, when they needed people who could get arrested somewhere, they showed up and that seemed to work, you know? So that was cool. Um, and we kind of freestyled it ourselves really in the end. And the less, the thing we found was that the less we tried to organize it, the more we were in the right place at the right time which was quite uncanny um you know not dissimilar was the emotions that we were playing with in tableau in the end we stopped naming the emotions because initially we were trying to do it so one person will say it and everyone will follow but you know some people don't hear it and then people are going like what or you know it gets a bit clunky and we were like just just feel your emotion whatever it is and everyone else will feel it. And it doesn't matter if you're feeling love and I'm feeling sorrow, it'll be okay. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's better that than we're all going, sorry, what, you know? Um, so yeah, we've, and yeah, we've had, we've had the only, yeah, annoyingly the first, I, I spoke to, um, I cannot remember her name for life of me. She was sort of charged and one of the organizers of Extinction Rebellion initially. I had really great kind of exchanges with her but it wasn't about organizing anything or anything like that. And um, the first real sort of official kind of communication that came in was maybe, I don't know, two years ago or something when someone was asking us not to show up. So the only time I got an official communication was someone asking us not to come, do you know what I mean? Which is a bit upsetting. <laughs> um, and th But they were just a bit of an outspoken person. Again, it's like, no one's really in charge, are they? So an Extinction Rebellion were trying to become more of like an everyman, you know, trying to be a bit more open and engaging with a broader community and stuff. So wanting to move it away from the costume element, maybe at that point. So yeah, it's not it's not been without its, its difficulties. I think, you know, and then, you know, working with Extinction Rebellion Bath, who are friends of mine, that was really smooth. They were really helpful. They really supported us. They helped us fundraise. You know, they fundraised and paid for mm -hmm. travel and for materials and things like that. And that was a real like partnership thing because we had a connection to them personally, I suppose, as well. It wasn't so faceless like London. L London exile was a bit more difficult, but we never had any real direct support outside of that that project with um, Bass for the funeral. Cool. And yeah. Anybody it's else want to ask a question or uh, Steve? Uh, Doug, it's great to have you in our midst here. It's um, very exciting. Um, and I love that we're integrating art with a movement to hopefully change the world. And I think we have to have art in that sphere to make it real. Um, my question is, is is growth of the Red Rebel Brigade important? Is having it spread to other parts of the world important, or should we not worry about that? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? I well, I wasn't anticipating it spreading in the first place, so it was it was it was a happy accident and beautiful surprise when it did, um, and. Again, it's those things as well, like when things first happen, they're really powerful because no one's seen it before. So the longer something goes on, the more no normalized it becomes. So maybe it has less impact or maybe it picks up less traction in the media or whatever. But then at the same time, 
you know, when you go out on the street and perform it, people still have a powerful reaction. So that's kind of like when I used to do street theatre, you know, if we had a street show that wasn't, that was new. So people would, like when people first saw human statues, they were blown away. Whereas seven, eight years later, they're like, oh, yeah, so you know, yeah, walking past. So it's kind of, I guess it's, um, yeah, I don't know if it's important. It, it's, I was really, I suppose I'm inter I was interested. I was, I was amazed how it spread to start with as well and really touched by it. And, um, and I guess I sort of feel like, yeah, like a renaissance of it. It's interesting with the funeral for nature because suddenly there's a bit of a hubbubble of of activity and people going, oh, yeah, and yeah, we used to do that a lot. And, and the pandemic took a lot of wind out of everyone's sails. So it's been nice to see people coming back together around it. Um, and also that, you know, part of the idea was that you would, through it, people would form these little creative communities and, and do other stuff, whether that's like, yeah, whatever that shape or form that takes. You know, some of some of which has been really powerful, some of which has been a bit hit and miss, you know what I mean? It's little um so whether it's whether it's a yeah, I don't know whether it's a, a key focus or not. I was kind of interested personally to kind of touch base with people that it, that was doing it and just through getting access to the to the accounts again was quite interesting. Like when I did the five year anniversary post on Instagram or something, I can't remember how many people sort of liked it or whatever. So suddenly it was like, oh wow, there's a lot of people out there watching it still. Do you know what I mean? Despite the sort of not being able to tell. And then different people getting, there's still groups in like Italy and France and Australia has got three different troops and yeah, all these places where it's still sort of happening or new troops are forming. There's quite a lot, of, there's loads of, troops in like Norway and Finland and Sweden at the moment for some reason and Belgium got like a huge group so it's kind of like a constantly a morphing thing you know whether it's like important that it grows again or not I, I couldn't say I suppose it's kind of beautiful that if it does and it's okay if it doesn't <laughs> mm. I think what I liked about the bath project with funeral for nature was suddenly it was like okay you've got used to us like how about 300 of us how's that you know <laughs> and and it's only more critical now it's not like the crop like we haven't fixed it have we it's not getting any better um if anything it's been getting worse so yeah that, that's doing that thing on mass that was suddenly really powerful for that reason i guess and that has invigorated now there's troops all over england again kind of going yeah we're going to do the next thing you know We've seen the New York chapter fold and one in near us, Western Mass and around New England. So it is, um, you're right, it changes. And yet we're still kind of moving along. And when you said about how it's even worse now, um, we won't turn to politics, but this is a really dark time for us, not just the planet, but what's going on politically this year. Um, yeah. And so nobody has said to you yet what it's meant and i want to even though i'm the moderator because if i don't tell you i will be sorry that i missed my chance because i was early moved by you in 2019 the reds i didn't know who you were <laughs> and uh, when i signed up to xr i said i'll sign up but i want to be a red and they said well fine but you've got to start a group and um so um even now i my heart i i just i have to say um I wouldn't want to underplay what it's meant to have this shared experience with you and other Reds, both in this call and around the world. Um, yeah. And for me to do it without words has been, uh, it, it somehow is about the grief. Uh, it feels there are many emotions that we experience, but I feel like we are frequently channeling people's grief because it's it's just almost impossible to give words to grief. Um, and and yet the love is like right behind it. Meaning when we're out there, we're never mean to anybody. Uh, and so while there's sorrow, there's also uh, a connection. And so um, I just wanted to tell you how much that meant to me. <laughs> I could ask you a million questions, but I'm not going to. Um, 
I, I will say that um, I remember in 2019 in the summer before we went out, it was so small, Doug. I saw you an email saying, yeah, but what do you really do when you go out there? Like, you know, <laughs> and you answered in detail. And I, I mean, it, this was before it sort of exploded and there were just reds everywhere. But um, it, yeah. it felt extraordinary to have that connection and again, to have you here. So I don't know if any of our other reds have questions. Or maybe you want to say, hold on, Brown. I don't know if you want to say anything, but, but Brown's next after me. <laughs> you have no more to say. Yeah, I mean, that's really beautiful to hear. And um, likewise, you know, was, when I, I saw the video of the Boston Reds on the bridge, you know, that was like, Oh, I'm gonna. I could. I could cry thinking about it. It's amazing. I don't know why. I think it's because I'd seen TV shows from America with that news band thing, and suddenly they're just like, yeah, just floating across the bridge in a V. And I don't know if the cops were backing up or what was going on, but it was just so like, yeah, significant. Like signified something to me quite powerfully that I was watching this on like American news. You know what I mean? And they're like, um, yeah, that was really funny. And yeah, that. Yeah, it was, it's really heartwarming the way it's spread and the connection that people have had. And just that, it is, isn't it? That silent grief, you know? I kind of, I just love it because it's just beyond words and it, yeah, it just cuts through all of that stuff, I think, really well. So it's kind of, yeah, it's beautiful to think of and to, yeah, to, to just, yeah, I don't know, it's not, it's funny, isn't it? I, I was being interviewed about it just before this meeting, actually, by someone. And and I was like, it's not like you, like I didn't plan it or intend it or think even about it, that it was going to spread like that. And like those things, because he's like, well, what's next? What are you going to do that's going to match up to that? And I was like, I'm not even going to try, you know what I mean? Because how can you plan that sort of a thing? Um, but it has been a really yeah heartwarming kind of thing to think of and it's funny isn't it when you think of all that like I always used to say even while I sleep I know they're out there weirding out policemen somewhere <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> yeah I am going to go to Brownland but I have to say going out there in 2019 no reds had been arrested and I would thought oh great Boston we're going to be the place and it didn't <laughs> and then you responded to the news and it's like it wasn't that we had been arrested <laughs> what a relief um Brownland yeah. please Okay, well, Susan, you really shared a lot of what I was going to say, but just to add on to that, you know, I, I just want to say thank you, Doug, for your vision, because you just sort of were the conduit for something um, magical and spiritual and um, bringing together so many elements that I've been looking for in my whole life. I have a little, well, yeah, I was going to say a little bit of a theater background. It's it, it it looms large in my mind, but it hasn't made its presence known in the world. But I'm very connected to the world of theater, but never found my place. And I come from a back a family of protesters and um, political activists, but never quite felt like I found my place there either. And then you know I'm very connected with spiritual and um, earth. Um, oriented uh, spiritual organizations and it feel, felt like the Red Rebels was the perfect blend and match. It's like the intersectionality of everything for me. And when I turned 60, I was like, I need to do something for the planet. And um, I had known about the Red Rebels and it was in the back of my mind. And then I joined and it's kind of like I made a vow to myself to sort of be um to be a red rebel feels like this spiritual um, role for me. And when I'm out there, that's what I feel like. I'm like one, uh, like part of the Greek chorus or one of the fates, or I feel like the energy of the universe is flowing through me and through my fellow colleagues. And it's so beautiful and so powerful. And even though sometimes as we all feel like, is this going to make a difference? I still feel like this, is having an impact in the way um, that I can participate rather than sitting at home and feeling helpless and powerless and getting depressed. Um, and as we all say, it really takes a certain kind of person um, who may not even have a theatrical background to be willing to get suited up in all of our red outfits and to put on the white makeup and all of it you know sometimes in the sweltering heat sometimes in the freezing cold 
So there's a there's a dedication and commitment um, in the heart that feels so powerful and wonderful. And um, I just want to thank you for all of your work and your vision and um, for bringing it to the world. And and yeah, it's sort of like you you birthed something and now your baby is out there doing her own thing. You know, and who knows how <laughs> she's going to grow or not. But thank you for birthing her. Um, and um, yes, you're very inspirational. And I just honor you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it just made me think about how um, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, just feeling like it, like we were invincible, basically, once we hit the streets that first time. And I was just like nobody's gonna fuck with us you know what I mean? <laughs> just, just, excuse my french but it's just like no one can do anything about this it's just too beautiful and too weird and we were just unstoppable and like the police were just like there's another there's um my friend overheard the cop the, on waterloo bridge was the first time we we'd lined up in front of the police and it just sort of happened that was another one of those things we were down the river thames further and we were like shall we go back the way we came shall we go home like we've been out for hours. And I was like, no, okay, let's just walk up to the next one and go past the camp at Waterloo just to kind of, because we hadn't visited that yet. And we just turned up as the police were arresting people and had kind of lined up all around the stage and stuff. And we just floated in there, you know, and we sort of, we we all took, we all, there's photos of us all on this bus stop kind of watching what was going on for a bit. And then we kind of lined up with the first line. And after about six or eight minutes, they all turned their backs on us. And we we're like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> you know, which was immediately like, they were immediately not powerful presence. You know, it just completely drained their presence. And they just, they went, they left pretty shortly. And I was like, wow, they've left. You know? <laughs> and then we went around the front of the truck. And that was when everyone started sort of crying, including some of the police. Um. And someone overheard the sergeant was briefing the constables uh, at the end of the day and was like, blah, blah, blah. You know, and, okay, you're dismissed. And they all went to turn away. And he's like, oh, one more thing. Nobody arrests any of those bloody red people, you know? And that was when we sort of realised that we were unarrestable, more or less. And yeah, that feeling of just being invincible, basically, in a really sort of other world was really sort of powerful. And then, yeah, just floating down, floating down the middle of the street, just with traffic zooming by or whatever. And we did nearly have an incident with a motorcycle courier, which was a bit serious, but... And the police would then just start directing traffic. And there's one time that the, a, a police cruiser stopped and he was, they were like, we were walking up towards Piccadilly Circus, which is like a major junction in the middle of London. And the, the, it, was, it was Poppy Day, it was War Memorial Day. And they stopped and they were like, are you part of the war, war memorial? You know, because we we're all in red and it's all poppies. And I, I didn't say anything. I just kind of like, you know, vaguely nodded. I just wobbled my head a bit. And they were like, we'll go and stop the traffic for you at Piccadilly Circus, you know, <laughs> and, and went and cleared the roads for us and stuff. And that kind of, yeah, I remember when you were, when you were talking about just that feeling of being like invincible. And feeling really sort of powerful, you know, and and in a in a clean way, you know what I mean, in a be in a spiritual sort of way, rather than feeling like we had power over them or it wasn't about that at all. But that was really, yeah. I only went. I went up for the three days I was going to go, and I stayed for like ten days in the end because I couldn't possibly leave because um, I was just enjoying it so much. You know what I mean? It was such such great fun as well. You know to be compared to a lot of, you know, yeah, more con confrontational situations I'd had in the past, I guess, with protesting and stuff. Yeah, it just felt so powerful and so effective and such great fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, David, Sandy, Tracy, anybody we haven't heard from yet want to say something? Susan? If not, I'm just going to open it up. <laughs> um, Susan? Oh, I'd like to, I, I, I'd just like to say thank you. And um, because it's, it, it's been life-changing to be able to do this. 
And um, and I, you know, it's, I I appreciate it when whenever we, you know, get to, to together. It's been really um, wonderful. We're a little more in the states. Has been I don't know. I felt sometimes less powerful when people are screaming Trump, Trump, Trump at us, or you know, it's or singing the Star Spangled Banner. We once went through the common and all this weird stuff that tends to happen. <laughs> but it is it is a measure of the impact we're having. But also, on if you would be so kind, I'm a big fan of Chris Pack. I mean, would you send him my best? <laughs> I'll do my best. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Likewise, if you guys want to like send, a, you know, if you want to send a message of your story, um, either written or as a as a voice note, you know, you can get my my number from um, Susan. Um, there's two Susans, aren't there? Yeah, yeah that's very confusing. <laughs> two Susans, because we have, because um, we're both, you know, we both talk to other people, so people go, you know, outside the group. But if anybody sends it to either one of us, we promise to get it to talk. We will. We will. Yeah. <laughs> go sure. one way or another. Yeah, because I'm, I'm just going to carry and on. Also, Kalei, our, how do we find your podcast? I don't think I knew you did a series. Oh, yeah, it's on um, Spotify and everything. It's called The Festival at the End of the World. So it's just it's starting out. I'm only on up to six episodes. It's a very slow kind of process getting them out. It seems we've been it's been a lot longer than we intended. But um, yeah, I started it just from being stuck at uh, stuck in Panama when the pandemic hit, and kind of going going through that story of what's gone on there, really. Um, but yeah, the Red Rebels came into that last episode. Oh. So it's, yeah, it's the festival at the end of the world. I guess it's on other platforms as well, but. And you know Gwen, it's on evils. Bye. Do you have your hand up, Gwen? Yeah, I I was just wondering if, from what Doug knows about us uh, in Boston, I guess in particular, or Massachusetts, um, do do you have any particular perceptions or advice or anything? I mean, that is um, unique to being American, or just whatever thoughts you might have. Yeah, well, I know. I appreciate what you're saying there about how vocal kind of people might be in opposition and stuff. And I remember there was a video. Some some woman had taken a video and had was was um, filming the video on her laptop of the bridge. And then she was talking about as one of the first times I saw the like, are they Satanists or what? You know? Do you remember that? Did you ever see that? It was really hilarious because she was like. She was sort of being critical, going, you know, who are these people? Is the bridge going to fall down tomorrow? What's going on? You know, are they Satanists? They're Satan worshippers. They must be. Check them out. What are they doing? You know, and then the camera was sort of panning away. And she was like, don't take the camera off them. Why are you putting it over there? Go back. Go back to them. You know, and like she sort of, I don't know if it's still up online, but she was kind of animating over the top of it in quite a, you know, probably in a derogatory way. But nonetheless, she couldn't. She was like keep the camera on them, you know what I mean? It's too interesting not to. And I I, I sort of loved that as well, because I'd already, I'd seen the bridge footage on its own, and then I saw this crazy, and she's had a real Boston accent as well, you know? And it was like, I really Perfect. loved the fact that she was then putting it out to how many followers she's got going. And she, it, was, it was interesting, because she was being critical, but she was also being like, you know, supportive in a way, going, look, they're unstoppable, they're unstoppable. Why is no one arresting them, you know, talking about it like that? So I guess like, yeah, that was a, that was my only other sort of uh, interaction online, watching you guys in action. And I guess, yeah, America's a very tumultuous time and place, isn't it, right now? Uh, as it is in England and everywhere, really, you know, the whole world's gone pretty crazy, politically speaking, and our politicians have, you know, good old, Good old Donald was just the first of many that have now surfaced to they're kind of showing their their true hand as well, aren't they? They're kind of, you know, showing their true colours in a way, which is kind of yeah, more disturbing because you realise what a facade it's been, because these people are just blatantly driven by profits, you know, and in either party as well, we've got that it's a, you know, it's a bit like that was um England at the moment was Labour becoming very centrist and very right wing, basically, and and you know no one's um, 
yeah, no one's standing up to their climate pledges and stuff like this. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, I think we've had we've had some hostility here in England with it as well. People are getting it's the age of the internet. People are getting more vocal and feeling like it's because people are used to just commenting into a void through a machine. Suddenly, in real life, they're getting like noisier and more obstreperous, you know. But um, I would just sort of keep on doing what you're doing, and and yeah, it's in like it was really interesting recruiting loads of people around an event with some kind of celebrity presence, for example, it was a really interesting kind of evolution of it. Um, and yeah, I think there's another. Extinction Rebellion thing planned for the end of summer. That's another interesting thing. There's a March for Nature next week, and they asked us not to appear in a massive presence because everyone after the after the funeral for Nature was like, yeah, we'll go and do the Nature March because it's another thing with Chris Packham as well. So we got in touch with them, and they were like, it'd be great to have Reds there, but we don't want, like, hundreds of them because we're trying to... You know, that's already been picked up by the media... And we don't want to overshadow the other, you know, participants in a way. Uh, and some Reds were like, no, let's go, let's do it, let's take the 500, you know? And we're like, woo, woo, woo. So I sort of mediate that conversation a little bit and go, well, look, the organisers are asking us to maybe hold it down a little bit and maybe we'll go, we can go large at the end of um, summer with Extinction Rebellion. Mm. Yeah. Kathleen? I'd say I, I the last time I counted, I think I've walked to red like 35 times. And I would say that every single time somebody yelled out calling us devil worshippers and occasionally we're confused with handmaidens, too. Yeah, yeah. This is the totally red thing. Uh, I've only had something thrown at me once. Um, but there have been times when I've been... I mean, there's so many guns in the United States that there are times when I've been afraid. Yeah. Uh, even even though we we are, but one fast thing. Uh, were you? I feel when I'm getting dressed, I feel like I'm dressing as a very red medieval nun. Was that in your mind? <laughs> Were you a no. nun in your previous <laughs> lives? <laughs> oh, I remember really? one time walking across the Boston Common with Gwen. The two of us dressed red. We were heading from one spot to another. And I had this sudden feeling of being part of an order that always dressed that way. Um, so, no, yeah. I just, that's just a, an idle question is whether that's what you were thinking or, you know, where. Well, it's, it is interesting because that is a thing that's in the. Uh in the Catholic tradition in Spain. And I think in Bristol as well, there's um, Red Cliff St. Mary is a big cathedral next to the harbour where like a lot of the, back in the day of people sailing off to other lands and everything, um, colonialism <laughs> and whatnot, there was, they used to do this big parade there where everyone would dress in red. And I think it was a lot of like the coming of age ceremony for for young women and stuff as well. Really, and there, there are there are various like historical things with it, I guess. Um, and it's you know the the Spanish Inquisition, I think, had a lot of that. Maybe red cardinals and all this sort of stuff. So mm -hmm. still um, do. But yeah, it was um, the statues we used to do. It was that is the same costume basically. It's a statue costume that I used to make, and that's oh. really quick to make. And I used to make it without sewing and everything because I, I didn't couldn't really sew very well. So that, I sort of modelled off of that, and that was because when we did these statue characters, I noticed people would eat back then in like the nineties or whatever. People would be going, "Oh, it's the, it's you know, it's the in Spain they used to, like the the Catholic women would cross themselves and think we were Catholic things, and the 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 Muslim people would think we were Moors." And people would say all these different things. People and in the regions where the Knights Templar were famous, they think that we were Templars. And I sort of realised people kind of imprint over whatever they relate yeah. sort of to it. So like Satanists, for example. <laughs> yeah. 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 So Satanists has become, you know, and that's a bit of like, you know, obviously there is that cult 
you know, the cult, the look of a cult, and the Handmaid's Tale and Satanists are quite popular right. tropes to get banded right. around there. Yeah. But um, yeah, again, that's kind of yeah. I guess it's um, I mean, the first time I recall it happening, I don't know whether the Boston video was before or after, but the G seven in Cornwall, a news a newspaper report went out saying that we were a satanic cult. Um, wow. organized by Boris Johnson so like a Tory <laughs> satanic cult uh, enacting <laughs> rituals on the beach at the G7 and I was like and it was obviously just a clickbait kind of website that's trying to get clicks you know yeah. that's the thing isn't it people are just trying to get right. attention for their stuff so they'll write anything and I was like mm-hmm. it's quite yeah that was quite funny and I was like anything. the fact that they we were yeah. suggesting we were a Tory cult for one thing was a bit insulting <laughs> and that we would be doing satanic rituals like on the beach you know what i mean it's kind of stupid as well but steve did you want to say i think you yeah, also had a... um kathleen uh jogged my memory of the last time i was getting suited up in my um my costume when i i was raised catholic and i was an altar boy i was a good catholic boy and um, part of the responsibility of, of an altar boy is to get the vestments ready for the priest. And this is prior to, you know, uh, Vatican, uh, whatever that was back in 1963. And so mm. everything was pretty strict, right? So you had to put folds in surpluses and there were cassocks and there were ropes and uh, things to put on wrists. And, but I, it was like, uh, this last time I got costumed, I felt I felt like, oh, I'm I'm doing what I did as a boy. I'm getting <laughs> all, my, all my costume ready, and then there's like a certain order you put it on, and the, the safety pins here and there. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, there's that's what the, the, so there's a visceral kind of thing that I didn't even know was there. But you reminded me, Kathleen, that that's kind of what it was like the last time. A ritual. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Ritual, yeah, in the best sense, in the best sense. Yeah. Because I, I traveled with the, the white statue character for like eight years or something um, all around the world, kind of performing that show. And then I hadn't done it since 2002, maybe, until 2019. And I'm, you know, the last time we did, we dressed in those characters, we did an anti-war march in London for the anti-Iraq mm-hmm. war. Um, but again, it was a bit more kind of, we weren't necessarily slow moving in procession so much. There were some characters on stilts and sort of, you know, it was more just marching in pace. Um, but yeah, it was really interesting because I suddenly remember going back into that character um, and, and moving, you know, because we did really slow movements and we were doing the statue shows. So suddenly it was, I was like, oh, I have actually trained this for like eight years <laughs> in the streets before, you know what I mean? And and the same feeling of being in that kind of impenetrable zone sort of came back in as well. So it's kind of interesting that, yeah, you know, although I didn't prepare it at all, it was just clicking back, like what you just reminded me of that really by saying about how you're clicking back into an older thing. For me, it was the same. I was like, oh, I've, you know, I've done, and I tried to do a statue gig a few years, maybe 10 years ago or something, but I couldn't stand still like I used to be able to. I was like mm-hmm. <laughs> wobbling around a lot more, but yeah. Yeah, clicking back into that zone. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm aware of time, Doug. Any more? Any last um, thoughts to share with us before we send you away with all the love in our hearts? <laughs> um, well, no, it's, it's been really nice to speak to you all, actually, to connect with you guys. Like I said, I've always been a bit of like a, a Boston Reds fan, if that's a thing. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Not the Boston Red Sox, have... but the Boston Reds. <laughs> <laughs> uh since that video time i don't know and i don't know why but necessarily it just got me so much but um yes i've always been aware of you guys and that you've kept you know kept it going and stuff like that uh through all that time so it's been really nice to actually speak to you all and meet you all well if Um, you ever find yourself headed our way you've got more than seven places to stay (laughs) yeah (laughs) we'd welcome you yeah yeah i'd love to visit america again as i was saying that to my friend and who's from, yeah, I can't remember where he's from, Pennsylvania originally, but he was like, oh, it's not a good time to visit now. And I'm like, it's totally a good time to visit now. You know what I mean? 
like the whole world's in a crazy time who knows when it's going to get any better but right um yeah because i found out my my grandfather i thought was a scottish um soldier isn't he was an american soldier it turned out scandalously oh so somewhere oh. somewhere near georgia i have this like quarter i've got some distant cousins probably <laughs> Well, so do a DNA like, test before you come, and we'll find your cousins. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I did the test, so I sort of I did message a few people on Ancestry, but it's a bit of a contentious issue because it was obviously like, I think they uh they'd gone back to America and then, you know, Amazing. got together and had kids and stuff with someone else. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I was like, I've always had this affili affiliate, you know, affinity with America for some some reason i could never figure out until i found that out yeah <laughs> oh, interesting well, if you, can, if so, you, yeah, can, you probably comments. you probably have some affinity with with the, the a, a lot of people in 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 boston massachusetts or cambridge uh, the, the the uh art theater is is a, a real generator of of all kinds of good stuff theatrically so uh, that's american repertory so oh yeah I echo Susan's invitation. We 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 would be happy to host you if, um, if ever you wanted to come to the Boston area. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, if I, I'm, I was thinking about trying to trying to arrange some kind of um, visits. If not the end of this summer, then sometime next year. So I'll take you up on that if I get over at the pond. And likewise, Wonderful. if you ever come to England, do let us know. Yeah. I think if we're ever there, we'll go out with the Reds. There's no question yeah, for anyone. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't happened yet, but somebody's going to do it. Um, yeah, we had people so over be... from, from Belgium and stuff and um, Sweden for the funeral thing. Yeah. So, yeah, people are traveling a little bit more. Well, thank you so, so much. And um, take care. Yeah, thanks so much for, for, yeah. for arranging it. And, um, yeah, we'll chat again, chat again some other time. That'd be great. Okay. We'll take you up on that. <laughs> all right. Lots of love to you all. Thank you. Pass on my love to the rest of the, yeah. the, rest of the team. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Doug. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.